designers, we want to create work that is unique and stands out. One of the best ways to do this is to customize typography, making every logo, every design, and every brand unique to you. In this video, I'm gonna be choosing one font and using four different tools in Adobe Illustrator. Each tool will completely change the look and the design of the font, showing you just how powerful manipulating typography can be. So before we jump into any customization, why do we actually need to customize a typeface when creating a logo type? Imagine picking a font for your client and using that as the logo type. Any other business can come along, purchase that font, and use it in the exact same way as you are. But when we add in that customization and we tweak some letters, you are creating something distinct and one of a kind. So you may also need to customize a font to portray a certain emotion or feeling towards your target audience. So adding in that slight tweak can play a massive, massive part. So now we know the importance of customizing a typeface, let's actually get into how to do it and my go-to tools. So the word that I'm customizing today is balance and this was taken from my vision board. So the first tool we are diving into is the direct selection tool. So when you first start with your font or your typeface, make sure that you outline it and you can do this by pressing Command, Shift and O. And this basically allows you to access all of the anchor points because it is now vectorized. So what the direct selection tool does is it allows you to move each anchor point, meaning that you can change the shape, the width and the length of each letter. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this. So if you go to an anchor point with your direct selection tool selected, you can literally move each individual anchor point and create something that is completely different to the original letter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna move all of the anchor points and try and basically form all of these letters around each other, changing the shape and making sure sure that everything is balanced. A tip I will give is that if you are using the direct selection tool and you are tweaking the typography, make sure that everything is cohesive. So if you kind of change the width of one letter, make sure you're changing it to the exact same width in another letter so that everything is cohesive and there isn't an imbalance. So I have now gone in and I've changed some anchor points, I've moved them about and we've created a really nice typeface. It looks so different than the original, but the thing that is missing at the moment is it kind of feels too sharp. So something you can do with the direct selection tool is you can actually select all of the type and you can choose the anchor point inside the letter. So you will see that there is like a little circle inside the letter. If we pull that, you will notice that all of the edges are now really curved. And instead of it being really sharp now, we've got some really nice curves in there. So if you were trying to portray a more softer and friendly emotion to reach that target audience, then you may want to add in those curves. But if you wanna create more of a sharp and bold feeling, then you would leave it with those sharp edges. So I'm now just gonna put the two types next to each other. So we've got the original and the one that we have tweaked and you can see the massive difference in the customization that I've done by just using one tool. So the original, it was bold, it was okay, but now we've actually added some movement and the letters are forming into one another and that can be achieved by using the direct selection tool. The next tool that we are diving into is the pencil tool and it is a godsend tool and the tool that I think I use most frequently every single day. So you can either use a trackpad to get the desired look that you need, or just use a magic mouse. I learned with the magic mouse and that's what we're gonna be using today. So the main way that I like to use the pencil tool is by going into each individual letter and just using the tool to either change the shape, the thickness, the roundness, and just going freehand with the pencil tool. Or you can create a new shape with the pencil tool and then add this onto the existing letter and use the Pathfinder tool to connect the two. So let's actually grab the pencil tool and put it into action. So I'm going to go into the inside part of the B and I'm actually just going to change that inside shape by just adding in a line and changing it to a more arched and a more friendly vibe. I'm then going to go to the A and I'm actually going to add in a wave to the line that's already there. And I'm literally just grabbing the pencil tool, moving it down and creating that really nice wave. So it was straight and now it's wavy. And I'm gonna do exactly the same to the end. We're just gonna drag the pencil tool and we're gonna create a really nice curve in that end. And it kind of looks like the two waves are slotting into one another, which is really, really nice. 
So that is done and that looks incredible. A complementary tool to the pencil tool is the smooth tool. Now this is an incredible tool if you want things that don't look kind of perfect to look perfect. So with the pencil tool, obviously you're doing it freehand. It can create lines and there can be rigid edges and it doesn't look perfect. But if you grab the smooth tool and you literally just drag it over the line that you have created, it will create perfect lines and it will kind of just smooth out that line that you've created. So once again, I'm just gonna grab the original type and we are gonna compare the two. So as you can see, we have created something a lot more custom, a lot more distinct and we've actually added some personality into the type. Recently, I did a Q&A on my Instagram stories and answered a question about pricing and how I've been able to raise my rates when working with clients. One of the tips I gave was to never stop trying to improve your skills as a designer and to keep investing in yourself. A great place to do this is by using Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can learn from. They are today's sponsor of the video and very very useful if you are looking to take some classes and improve on your skills for 2022. One class that I've taken recently is creating animated stickers in After Effects by Manon Luar. So learning how to bring your logos and designs to life through animation is a skill that I've been really wanting to learn and improve on. So if you are wanting to learn something new, then I've teamed up with Skillshare to give the first 1,000 of my subscribers a 30 day free trial, meaning you can try out any class that you want. All you gotta do is click that link in my description. The third tool that we are gonna look at is the curvature tool. Now this is a combination of the direct selection tool and the pen tool, but you get more of an option to create really nice curves within straight lines and with different anchor points. So I'm gonna show you an example of the curvature tool. If we grab the L and I put an anchor point at the top and pull this up and down, you will notice that a really nice curve starts to happen. The same with the L as well. So I'm just gonna go into each letter. If you select the curvature tool and then you click on the letter you want, you can start adding individual angle points to this and have a play around with creating those really nice curves. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into each of the individual letters and create this kind of like movement and curvature, obviously we're using the curvature tool, and create that personality that you're trying to create within the type. So I have gone into each individual letters, I've had a play around with the anchor points, I've removed some, I've added some, and we've created some really nice curves on the individual letters. So what I'm gonna do now is compare the both of them. So if we grab the original one, you can now see the personality that is forming within the type with just tweaking the the smallest things with the curvature tool. The final tool that we are looking at today is the width tool. Then this allows you to create variable strokes so you can get different thicknesses and thinness in different parts of the stroke. So you'll be able to connect letters and get a really nice looking stroke instead of it being one thickness. So when you actually customize typography yourself, you will probably use a load of different tools together. So within this one, we are gonna be using the width tool, but I'll also be using other tools that we used as well to achieve the look I want. So what I'm gonna try and achieve is we're gonna create a really nice stroke from the L going into the A. So in order to do this, I'm gonna grab the rubber tool and I'm actually going to press the space bar and it will bring up a really nice rectangle. So it gives you that really nice straight line, which I only found out recently, by the way. I'm gonna do exactly the same to the A and I'm actually gonna get rid of some of these anchor points so I can create that really nice line between the L and the A. I'm now gonna grab the curvature tool which we've used before and I'm gonna just basically create a really nice curved line. So that is done and I'm just gonna increase the stroke so that it's the same thickness as our original letters. I'm just gonna move the anchor points of our curve and make sure that everything is lined up. And now we can go over to our width tool and actually start changing the thickness of this line. So it looks okay as it is now, but adding in different thicknesses and adding in like a thin part to the stroke can actually create a really nice effect. So we're just gonna go into these parts here. I'm just gonna drag the anchor points out and we've created such a nice line. As you can see, it goes from thick to thin and then it goes out to thick again. So I'm just gonna play around with this and get it to exactly how I want it to be. So the line is now perfect and the thing that I do after this is I will actually outline the stroke. So I'll go to object, path, 
outline stroke so that I have more anchor points to play with now. And obviously we've got the line extruding out of the A, so I need to get rid of that anchor point and tidy it up a bit. You know the last thing that we're gonna do, I'm grabbing the original type and we're just gonna compare the two. So we have now created a really nice custom type. We have intertwined the L and the A, creating a really nice arch, which could symbolize showing support. And it just looks really, really good by just using a few of those tools. The main tool in this one, the width tool, really getting that nice thickness in some parts and then really nice thin in another part. And I think the width tool can add a really nice effect to a line or a stroke that you're trying to achieve. So that is the end of the video of customizing typography, manipulating it, and showing you my go-to tools. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, also let me know your go-to tool for customizing type. And I will see you at the next video.